So let's look at the simplest case where there are only two groups of electrons sticking out of an atom. So that's the case where you have a steric number of two. And in this case, we expect the atom, let's say X here is our atom, we got two groups of electrons sticking out of it. To be, for these two groups to be as far away from each other as possible, then they have to be sticking out in opposite directions. So we say that the angle between those two groups is 180 degrees. Okay, so you can have two single bonds sticking out of an atom, that would be a steric number of two, or you can have a single bond and a triple bond sticking out in opposite, on opposite sides, or you can have two double bonds. So these are all different possibilities where you can have a steric number of two. So when that happens, we say, because of the shape here, you can say that X, okay, because there's two groups sticking out of it at 100, and that are 180 degrees apart, we say X is a linear center, and we say that the electron geometry around X is linear. Okay, so... Uh, a description of the center and a description of the electron domain geometry around that center. Okay, it is linear. All right, if we have three groups of electrons sticking out of an atom, so let's say you have atom X here, there's three groups sticking out of it, the three groups will be as far away from each other as possible if they are oriented 120 degrees apart. Okay, so 120 degrees any between any pair of groups here between any pair of domains the angle is going to be 120 degrees so uh, you can see if you were to imagine you have an atom at the end of each of these okay okay then the atoms would form a triangle and all of these groups will be on the same plane so we say that x is a trigonal planar center okay so these are there are different ways that this can happen. You can have three single bonds sticking out. You can have a two single bonds and a double bond, a single bond, a lone pair, and a double bond, three groups, steric number of three. Now, these are actually, okay, they're not going to, these two on the right are not going to be exactly 120 degree angles. It's going to be slightly distorted, and the reason for that is a double bond is a bulkier group, so it's going to push those single bonds a little further away. So the angle between the double bond and a single bond is going to be slightly 120, greater than 120. And uh, same thing with the lone pair. A lone pair is bulkier than a single bond. It's closer to the to the atom, so it could end up causing a distortion. But for our purposes, we're just going to say it's close to 120 degrees. Okay, but do keep in mind, unless all those groups are equivalent, okay, there's going to be some distortion from the trigonal planar uh, angles. If you're, here's an example of a, an ion that has a steric number of three, carbonate ion. Here's the lowest structure for carbonate ion. Okay, so here's your carbon right here. And then these are the three oxygens right here. So this is a ball and stick representation of that ion. These angles are 120 degrees. Notice there are three possible resonance structures where the double bond location can be at three different places. So if you average these out, you can say those all of those carbon to oxygen bonds are equivalent. And so you will have a perfect trigonal planar geometry here. We have 120 degrees angle all around. So we say that this center, carbon, is a trigonal planar center. And the shape of the ion is also trigonal planar. And the angle that goes to the, the, the central atom, the carbon atom in this case, is going to be 120 degrees. Now, what are those, what if, like I said, if those three groups are not equivalent, then the geometry is slightly distorted. So, for example, in the formaldehyde molecule, okay, here's the Lewis structure for formaldehyde. You have, if you look at this carbon atom, you have one, two, three groups sticking out of it. So, they're going to be 120 degrees apart, more or less. Here's your oxygen right here. Here's your carbon, here's your hydrogen, and here's your hydrogen. But this HCO angle, okay, is HCO angle right there. 
or this HCL angle right here is, you'll notice, it's 121.7. It's slightly larger than 120, and that's because that double bond actually pushes those single bonds a little more strongly than the single bonds would push each other away, okay? And you have the HCH angle here is going to be slightly less than 120. It turns out to be 117.46 degrees. But uh, I'm not going to give ask for very specific questions like that on the test. I just need you to know that it is distorted, and I would expect you to know that the uh, the ideal angle, if it weren't distorted, would be 120 degrees.